So two's complement can be used to represent positive and negative integers. Convert denary uh, negative nine into eight bit two's complement. So if I'm turning negative nine into eight bit two's complement, then first of all I've got to work out what positive nine would be. So I'm gonna start off with four zeros and then it'll go eight four two one. So that's my eight, my four, my two, and my one. So that's positive nine. Then I flip all the bits around, so all the zeros become ones, and the ones become zeros. And this is my kind of intermediate step. And then the last thing is you add one, and this question is nice and easy because it's got a zero in the last column, so all I need to do is one, 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 zero, one, one, one. And that's my answer. Now you state the range of denary values that can be represented using 8-bit 2's complement. There's different ways of working this out and I've given you different kind of formula for working it out as well. For some of you it might just be learning answers which most years works because you're going to know you know if it's 8 bits or 16 bits or something but um, really what I've got is 8 bits so I've got 2 to the power of 8 values to play with meaning that I've got 256 different numbers I can represent but because they're positive and negative half of those numbers are going to have to be negative and half of them are going to be positive and in that context zero is counting as a positive number so I could half it which gives me 128 and I'm going to my lowest number is going to be negative 128 to positive 127 because I've got 128 negative numbers and 128 positive numbers, including zero. Now, different ways of working it out. You can do it as what I've done there. You could say negative 2 to the power of 7. So you take one off the number of bits. To positive 2 to the power of 7 minus 1. Whatever method works for you, and I've given you other videos and other notes that have gone through different methods, but the answer is negative 128 to positive 127. If I had 16 bits or 32 bits or however many bits I had, it'd be 2 to the power of 16 or 32 or whatever. Right, increasing clock speed. One method of improving performance. So it's already given us one, and then there are three other methods because there are four in the course spec. So we could increase the width of the data bus, we could increase the size of the cache, we could increase the number of cores. Probably most importantly here, part B is explain how your answer to part A improves performance. So if this was me, I wouldn't jump straight in at part A. I would think about which one of these can I give the best explanation for? and then work backwards, and that's the one that I'll write in at part A. So if, for example, I think, do you know what, I'm going to give my best answer about the data bus, because that's the one that I can remember, then my explanation is that increasing the width of the data bus means you can transfer... more bits... per operation or per clock cycle and I can't spell already now then I need to do my part A so I'm increasing the width So I could give other answers in there. I could have said that if I had more cores that that would let me um, execute instructions simultaneously or in parallel. Um, I could have said that I would increase the size of the cache and that means that more of my instructions would be stored in this really super fast memory, meaning that I don't need to go and access the slower main memory every time I'm looking for them. But either way, you've got to give an explanation that matches. And then the last two short response questions. So 
Describe an intelligent system used on a car journey that's beneficial for the environment. Now, in the course book, there are three intelligent systems. There's an intelligent heating system for a house, and it's obviously not that. There's an intelligent traffic management system, and there's an intelligent car engine management system. And those are the three examples in the course spec. I could use either of the last two because this is just a car journey. So whatever one I'm going to be better at writing an answer for. So first of all, I'm going to have to describe what it is and then it says justify your answer. So I'll need to give a bit of explanation here as well. And that'll make sure that I'm making sort of two separate points. So the one that I'm going to go with is the traffic management system. So an intelligent traffic management system. And then, right, how does that benefit the environment? Like, what's my explanation here? So that could use cameras and sensors to reroute traffic around congestion. And what that means is they aren't stopping and starting all the time. And that reduces emissions. Now, could I've got away with probably a bit less detail than that? Yes, but that makes sure that I've got everything in there. So I've made my point. I'm gonna, I'm choosing to write about an intelligent traffic management system. I'm saying that it uses cameras or sensors or some way of, you know, it monitors the traffic, how it's doing it, and then it's rerouting traffic around congestion to keep the traffic moving smoothly um, so that people aren't stopping starting in a traffic jam because that would increase the emissions. And then lastly, the Agile question. So this comes up quite a lot as well. Um, two advantages of an Agile methodology. Now, it's important here that I'm not just saying like what Agile is. right? It's asking me for an advantage. Um, Agile, the, the kind of main thing that we're going to talk about with Agile is communication. So you're in really frequent communication with the client. That's come up sometimes in like a question about different time zones or why you'd have to be available to the client. So first of all, if I say that there's really frequent communication, um, that means, why is that an advantage? Well, I can get frequent feedback as I'm going. So Agile has frequent communication between the client and developer this means frequent feedback from the client. So the client's able to see what you're doing and then tell you whether you're on the right track or not. Um, now another advantage, I could actually say there is a separate point that I'm going to have um, prototypes available as I go because another defining characteristic of Agile is that I'm not producing one big monolithic piece of software right at the end of the process. I'm producing sort of smaller versions as I go and gradually building up. So I would have prototypes available for them to review. Um, I'm going to be doing repeated testing because I test all the time as I go instead of just testing once. Um, either of those would be fine. So I could say uh, frequent prototypes available for testing, evaluation, 
as you go. So I'm going to stop it there and then I'm going to look at the sort of bigger software development questions.